the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I was just looking at my watch and I noticed there's really not time for me to preach. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> you thought you were going to get out. However, before I do that, uh, let me mention two things. One, uh, we'll be out in about 15 minutes, so if you can just hold on that long, we'll, it'll be about another 15 minutes and we'll be finishing up the service. Uh, before I jump into my sermon, though, I do want to take one moment. You know, these young people did not get to this place by themselves. I wrote about that on the front of the bulletin. There have been a lot of people from their parents to the uh, friends in faith, to their teachers, to, to uh, some other people who have been involved. And I particularly want to recognize Michelle Ozier Wallace and Andrew Chapel and Karen Bass for their involvement. And we want to thank all of you for, for what you have done and the part you have played. You are witnesses. Those were the words that Luke records Jesus saying to the disciples in our gospel lesson this morning. They are among the last words that Jesus, uh, Luke records Jesus saying before he ascended to the Father. Now, by this time, Luke has already told us about the birth of Jesus. He's already told us about his life and teachings. He's already told us about his passion and, and death. And, and he's already described some of the resurrection appearances to us, how, how the women went to the tomb early on Easter morning and they found the stone rolled back and Jesus' body gone and how later that afternoon, Jesus drew near to a couple of unsuspecting disciples as they walked the long journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus and how Later that night, uh, Jesus appeared to the disciples who were behind closed doors because they were hiding with fear. You are witnesses, Jesus said to them that night. And in doing so, Jesus commissioned the disciples to take all of the knowledge, all of the insight, what they had learned from the time that they had spent with Jesus and their experience of the resurrection and to share it with the world. Well, in light of that, I can't think of a more appropriate Sunday for us to focus for a moment on that passage of Scripture than on this Confirmation Sunday. And for those of you who are not familiar with Confirmation Sunday. Confirmation Sunday is that Sunday when we give our young people an opportunity to publicly profess their faith in Jesus Christ and to publicly accept the gift that, of God's grace that he gives to us. Now, a few minutes ago, we saw a couple of baptisms, and in baptism, we declare that God's grace is given to us freely. There's nothing we can do to earn it. We can never hope to deserve it. It is simply given to us freely, which is one of the reasons why we do infant baptism. However, confirmation is when we accept that gift, make a commitment of our lives to, to spend the rest of our lives serving Jesus Christ, and it's when we join the church. I like to try and explain it this way. Imagine it's your birthday, and, and, and someone gives you a gift, and they give it to you for no other reason than the fact that they love you. It's beautifully wrapped, it's got a nice ribbon on it, and they place it on a table. Now, even though at that moment the gift has been given to you, can you really enjoy the gift at that moment? Of course not because the gift is still wrapped up. But later, maybe after you've had a chance to play some games or, or, or do some other things and, and eat some cake, then you take that gift and you unwrap it and you take it out of the package. And, and that's the moment when you can really begin to enjoy the gift that has given to you. I'd like for you to try and think about baptism as the giving of that gift and as confirmation as the unwrapping of that gift. Now, I know that's not a, a perfect illustration, but I think it gets at the heart of how these two things kind of tie together. And one of the ways that we unwrap the gift of God's grace that is given to us is by doing what Jesus commanded his disciples to do, to be his witnesses. If you noticed 
the last question that I asked these young people as they prepared to join the church was the question, will you be loyal to Christ and allow your loyalty to Christ to find expression here at Dunwoody United Methodist Church through your prayers, your regular attendance, your financial gifts, your service in the church, and your witness to the world. To confirm your faith is to say, I want to be a witness to the world of the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, with that in the back of our mind, I, I want to take just the few brief remaining moments that we have to say a couple of things about this whole matter of being witnesses for Jesus Christ. And the first one is this, stay close to Christ. Today is a glorious day in your lives. For months now, you've been learning about the faith. You've had caring teachers teach you about the faith. Many of you went on the retreat. Last night, we had a wonderful banquet. Today, just look around and look, there's a whole congregation full of people here to support you and celebrate this time with you. Today is a glorious day, and I hope you enjoy it to the fullest, and I hope it's a day that you will never forget, that you'll reflect on back upon many times in your life. However, let me warn you of something that can happen to you if you're not careful. Across the years, I've known people who once stood at the altar just as you did and took their vows. However, instead of seeing uh, their confirmation as a springboard that would lead them even closer to Jesus Christ. They saw it as a kind of graduation experience in which they were now finished doing everything they needed to do for the church. And what they did in the process is that they replaced uh, knowledge about God with spending time with God. And here's what happened to them. They drifted from their relationship with Jesus Christ. Church became less and less important to them. And instead of having the kind of witness of which Christ would be proud, their faith grew weaker and weaker, and their lives grew more and more out of sync with God's will for their lives. Listen to me. You cannot witness to that which you do not know. So continue to read your Bible. By doing so, it'll help you to understand God's purpose for your life, and, and it will help you to, to get some direction for your life. Continue to pray. That'll help you to stay in touch with Christ and with this unlimited love that he has for your lives. Continue to make church a priority. Now, I know, I know, church isn't always exciting. Sometimes the church, sometimes the preacher's sermons can be boring. Not mine, but other people's. I know sometimes the sermons can be boring. But if you continue to be regular in your attendance in church, it'll help you stay close to God and it will give you a dimension to life that you cannot have otherwise. The second thing is this. Beyond that, I want to remind you that people are watching you even when you're not aware that they are watching you. I love the story that a preacher acquaintance uh, of mine tells about an experience he once had. He's the pastor of a large church out in Phoenix, Arizona. And one day he needed to go to a department store to pick something up and he, he picked it up and he went to the cashier and he paid for it. And the cashier gave him some change and, and, and he took the change and he started to head for the door and, and he was almost at the door of the department store when he noticed that the cashier had given him too much money. And so he stopped, he turned around, and he went back to the cashier, and he said, excuse me, I believe you gave me too much change. And she said, I know. And he said, you know? What do you mean? She said, you're the pastor of that large church down the street, right? He said, well, yes, I am. She said, I was just checking to see if you actually practice what you preach. <laughs> Listen. Now that you have knelt at the altar of this church and stood before this congregation, 
and you have claimed Christ as the Savior and the Lord of your life, there are going to be people who are going to be watching you. They're going to be watching to see if you are going to be kind as Jesus told us to be kind, if you are going to be honest as Jesus was honest, if you, if you are going to care about other people as Jesus cared about other people. No, your witness will not always be perfect. You will make mistakes along the way, as we all do. But even then, that can be a witness for Christ. If you will acknowledge your mistake, claim forgiveness, and allow God to use that mistake to help you be a bigger and a better person than you are already. Finally, there's this. I want to remind you that to be a witness for Jesus Christ simply means you are to share by the way you live and by the things you say the good news of God's redeeming love. To be a witness for Christ does not mean that you have to go around quoting scripture all the time or that you have to have all the answers, the, the religious or spiritual answers for other people. Sometimes it simply means listening more to the hurts and needs of others than you do trying to give people's answer, people answers. But here's what it can also mean for you. It can mean that when you encounter someone who is hopeless, you can offer that person hope because you know that on Easter morning, Christ broke all the barriers. It means that when you encounter someone who feels beaten and defeated by life, because of the resurrection, you can help them know that there is always a tomorrow. It means that when you bump into someone who feels like a failure in life, you can help them to see that because Christ is alive, God is not finished with their lives yet. And it means that when you come across someone who feels isolated and alone, you can remind them that because Jesus suffered and died on a cross and then rose from the dead, there is a love, a divine love for them that will never end. You are witnesses, said Jesus. Notice he did not say, you might be, or you can be. You are witnesses for Jesus Christ. Now, I'll tell you honestly, after a lot of years of being in the ministry and trying to be a witness for Jesus Christ, it is not always easy to be a witness for Christ. But I can also tell you that without hesitation that if you will take it seriously, over time, you will discover that it is the greatest joy of your life. And that, dear friends, both new members, members who have been here in this church for a long time, Visitors and people who are not members, that is the good news for today. Our gracious and loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these confirmands. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us that we might be witnesses of you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Our closing.